All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Road Rage Garage. And today, we're going to be double pumping a G body, double pumping the cutlass to be exact. Not only that, but this is also converting the E85. So, I'm going to show you guys how you do that, how to, what you need, and how to make it happen. Let's get it. But before I even start, man, I want to give a shout out to that boy, Mr. Get In There. He's the only person I did see do this, but I ain't going to lie, boy. I one up you. I'm telling you, I one up you. And I'm going to run that through that real quick, man. That fuel pump you're looking for, I got it. So let's get into it, guys. Let's take it. Um, run E85, guys. You definitely have to get special hoses. If you want to run the factory style hosing, um, it just has to be stainless steel. Stainless steel uh, will hold up to corrosion when it comes to ethanol. But I decided to go with this here. This is nylon, a black line, nylon um, hose. Still braided inside. But if you can see right in between them, see if I can get that focus. You see that uh, little plastic looking tube? Yeah, you can see that, that that white tubing in there. Teflon, I believe is what it's called, Teflon um, tubing. This is the same thing you would use for like a, to run your refrigerator, to run the ice maker in your refrigerator or anything like that. Your holes must have this. It must be this or stainless steel or anything that can hold up against uh, fuel corrosion or alcohol corrosion. Just... Please, guys, if you don't want a lot of trash going to into your uh, injectors, clogging that up, not to mention slowly eating away at your fuel system, uh, definitely go with these hoses. They, they weren't too expensive. They came with the... In my particular themselves. setup, you definitely want to go with some good injectors. Uh, not to knock any other brand out there. Um, FIC uh, are pretty good at injectors. You can decap them if you want. Uh, whatever you choose, but I went with the ID 1300s, guys. Uh, you can't go wrong with these. I got all the room for growth. It is um, not an overkill, but it's definitely more than what I need right now at the moment. All right, next thing I want to show you guys is this here. This is an E85 sensor. Um, you just got to wire this in. You, you need power. One is signal, one is ground. Um, it just you're gonna have to look at a couple of diagrams depending on what you're running to know where to hook these up to uh, but that's pretty much it three wires nothing really hard about it and you should be good all right the next thing i want to talk about guys is these pumps here these are the ame 50 1205 these are discontinued i'm not gonna lie to you guys these are discontinued these are they, these were very very hard for me to find um i was managed i did manage to pick up two of them but i have not been able to find none since i always um, said if i do run across one i'll probably end up just buying it just to have it as a backup in case one ever fails uh, but to help prevent both pumps from ever failing at the same time what i do got is a hop switch i know a lot of you guys um that i've seen run dual pumps i don't see running hop switches hop switches what that do is it allows the boost to go in one side and then Depending on whatever on what you set the boost to be at, um, let's say I set the limit on the hop switch to be seven pounds, right? At seven pounds, what I end up happening is like a, 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 a breaker or a relay. It'll actually uh, flow the current through and activate the second pump. When you're cruising, uh, even when you you have a boosted application, when you're cruising, it's really not making boost. You could be at eighty and cruising, the RPMs are down low. Man, you're just cruising. You don't really need both pumps uh, to keep the car going. So this will ensure that one pump is off at all times. The only time it will kick on is when it actually needs it. When you are under a load, when the boost is up, this will engage and turn on the second pump. I'm gonna show you guys that in a little minute on how that would look when you actually set it up. Um, but if you can't get these pumps, which is fairly, fairly hard, uh, what I want you to do is go ahead and get the 50 1200s, I believe. 50 1200s. They are side, they are side um, inlets. It is an offset to the inlet. They're not centered. So you may have to modify the bracket a little bit. Maybe just 
Um, put a slit here, take about an inch off in the opening, and I think you should be good. Um, I believe that's what I've seen someone did. Mr. Getting, uh, I believe that's what he did. Um, he's actually the only person I've ever seen do the dual pumps in the G body. Um, but I one up them by actually getting the pump that's supposed to go in there. Um, this can also be replicated for anybody who wants to run a dual pump uh, set up, even if it's not E85. You can still find pumps with center inlets. However, for if you want to go with this brand and you want to go with E85, you are not, I repeat, you are not going to find this pump unless you're extremely lucky. Or, or unless they bring them back out. But these pumps are discontinued. I'm going to go ahead and set all this up, show you guys what the end product looks like, and see if we can get it in the tank. When you get one of these brackets, which I haven't talked about yet, but when you get one of these brackets, um, you'll place both pumps in here, glide this over this as such, and then you'll use this coupler here to coupler both pumps together from the top. Obviously the wires haven't been connected yet. Uh, I'd like to point out that this quick fitting that I have, I believe this is a 3 8 uh, to 8 AN uh, for the feed. I don't think I'm gonna use this um, only because I don't know what type of uh, material this is. I'm gonna look into it. I'm, I'm wishing it is a stainless steel uh, fitting and they just powder coated it or something, but it's probably not. But I'll figure it out. If it is, then I will use it and I'll get another one for the return. Uh, but if not, I'll figure something out. On the Monte Carlo, what we end up doing is going, we have a store down there called Maker Hose where you get custom hoses. And what they ended up doing was uh, welding a stainless steel bong onto, uh, what, well, another aluminum bong onto the end here. They cut it off and welded the aluminum bong to it. And that's the way we went there. Um, I'm not sure I might end up doing the same thing, but if not, this is what it will be if I can determine if the uh, fitting uh, will hold up to corrosion when running E85. My car was a mechanical, came with a mechanical fuel pump. Uh, so what I ended up having to do is buying this bulkhead wire harness. All right, what it, it comes with that one and this. Here's the part number I have in the link below. The only thing I was unhappy with is this here goes into the factory location. This is the bulkhead. You put it in, it goes into the factory location on all of these, right? It goes right in there, locks into place. And then what ends up happening is you didn't have this pigtail here that connects it um, onto it from below. The only thing I was unhappy with is they don't leave the colors coordinated. I mean, if you know anything about matching colors, really, um, you can put this thing together and it's not gonna be a problem. But on the bulkhead, there's four wires. There's a purple, black, red, and blue. On the pigtail below, there's a gray, blue, red, and black. Obviously the gray is going to the purple, uh, but it would've been nice if they kept the colors consistent for unexperienced uh, DIY guys trying to do this for the first time on their own. Uh, but it's no biggie. Uh, the only thing I have to point out is, again, there's five wires here, two ground, two uh, positive and one signal there's four here all right and when you open up the uh, fittings you end up with this here um, the part that is flare open you put this with the narrow side down into the hose and that goes and puts the plastic tubing within it and that should really just um, 
lock it in place once you pull this up. Obviously, this goes in. Um, you know what? Maybe I will. If, it, if, if I get enough likes, guys, go ahead. If I can get 200 likes on this video, I will upload a video on how tips and tricks on how to easily um, uh, put together your holes for for any E85 applications if you're running the proper hosing, which is the PTFE hoses. Um, so just let me know and I'll be sure to show you guys how to do that. Uh, but really that's it, there's nothing else to it. Fuel injectors, obviously you guys know you need a fuel filter. You need um, one with a boost, boost reference. Guys, get one with a boost reference. Um, I have one here somewhere. I wasn't planning on using it anymore. That was the one that I used originally in my vehicle. So I actually don't know where I put it. Put it at. Um, the one I am going to buy is an Aeromotive one. I am going to put that in the link below. So go ahead and click that if that's what you're looking for. So uh, that's what I'm going to be using. That's everything you need to convert to E85 in any vehicle. And this is what you need in order to double pump a G body or any vehicle that will that will support uh, two pumps uh, and by support I mean has a big enough diameter to fit two pumps into the tank. Uh, coupler is definitely one uh, important piece and then the this bracket here that helps hold the pumps uh, so that they're not sliding off and eventually coming off. All right, guys, what's pretty much left in the box is the pre-screen filter uh, that we're obviously gonna use. Clips right onto the bottom of the pumps. They have a hose, which we're not using because we're using the couplers. And I believe there's instructions and some clips in there. So, uh, some hose clamps in there. This is obviously for the uh, sending unit. That's to lock it into the tank. Uh, but pretty much, guys, that is it. Let me know if you guys wanna, want me to go over how to actually put these hoses together. Um, it's fairly simple. There is, you know, a lot of tricks that different people use. The trick that I use, I'll run through it real quick. And if you guys wanna see demonstra demonstration, let me know, put in the link below. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Let me know uh, what you think about the video. Let me know if you really want to see the uh, demonstration of how to put these hoses together, and I'll go ahead and put a video together. This is the end result. This is how you double pump a G-Body. Man, I'm telling you guys, this makes life a lot easier. I used to run a um, external pump, and I was thinking about running one in tank and one um, external since I was going to use a hop switch and I still am, um, the external one would kick on so it would never really, only when I need it, so it would never really get overheated. But this right here is going to be a lot quieter solution and uh, a lot cleaner solution. So uh, just give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, if this information was useful, um, and I continue to share with you guys what I can, what I know uh, to make these builds a lot smoother, a lot easier, uh, and get you to your end goal. Uh, thank you again, like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, we out.